Okay. And uh, so now I, I, I like to move to Stella Assange. Uh, thanks again for being uh, here on behalf of your husband, who is not able to represent himself because he's in high security prison in the UK. So uh, first uh, and most important, how is he doing? How is he coping? And then uh, uh, what you uh, think it is important to represent in this occasion? Thank you. Thank you. Um, firstly, I'd like to express both on behalf of Julian and myself our full and unqualified support for the award of the Sakharov Prize to the people of Ukraine who have shown great courage in the face of this dreadful war. I know that Julian wanted to say some more, um, and I'm hoping he can call at some point during the day. There's a, a further um, press conference at 5 o'clock in the Daphne Karwatsa Galicia room, and um, uh, I hope to be able to convey some more words from him uh, on that occasion if I manage to speak to him. Because as you know, um, Julian is in Belmarsh High Security Prison in London, where he has been since he was arrested on the 11th of April, 2019. That's over three and a half years. He is under administrative detention. He is not serving a sentence. He is fighting extradition to the United States, which is bringing an outrageous, regressive, politically motivated case against him for publishing the truth. Which brings me to my second point. I am very honored to share this panel with Francisco Lero and the Colombian Truth Commission. Julian, uh, for their incredible work, Julian and Wikileaks um, have, uh, Julian has dedicated his, his life to defending human rights and doing it through publishing the truth. Uh, Julian, one of his most famous um, quotes is that if lies can start wars, the truth can start peace. And the best way to achieve justice is by exposing injustice. Julian is um, facing uh, a politically motivated case in the United States for WikiLeaks publications about wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And what WikiLeaks exposed was the truth of the barbarity and the brutality of war and the fact that victims of war are the, um, the ultimate injustice against the victims of war is their victimhood not being known and recognized. So when Wikileaks published the Iraq war logs, 15,000 individual civilian deaths were brought to light. And the fact that these deaths had occurred had been um, hidden away to, um, by, uh, the, by the Pentagon for PR reasons, for finance reasons, for whatever reasons. Uh, but these 15,000 civilian killings had not been known until um, Julian and Wikileaks published the truth. Wikileaks also published evidence of a war crime in a video called Collateral Murder in Baghdad, where um, at least 12 civilians were gunned down by a helicopter. It's a video that shows a perspective from the helicopter as these people are killed. Two of them were gorgeous journalists. And um, when a van came to the rescue of one of the dying journalists, that van was also gunned down. And the rescuers were killed. And the only survivors were two children who survived because their father, who had come to the rescue of this dying journalist, threw his body over, their, over them. And they were severely injur injured. He died, but he blocked um, the bullets from killing them. 
I'd like to thank the European Parliament for the recognition of Julian this year as a finalist for its peak freedom of thought and human rights prize. It comes at a time where the urgency and importance of this case will not be clear. There is a growing clamor for Julian's freedom. Just in the last few weeks, we've had a joint statement by the New York Times regarding Le Monde, um, El Pais, um, and Der Spiegel calling for Julian's immediate release, uh, saying that this case is a uh, grave threat to press freedom globally. Julian is not being prosecuted as a source or as a whistleblower. He is being prosecuted as a publisher. He is being prosecuted, he is charged with receiving, possessing, and communicating to the public true information of the utmost public importance. It is a regressive case that is dangerous politically and legally. It is extraterritorial in its reach. Julian is not a US citizen. He was not in the United States. He was, in fact, in the United Kingdom, and he was publishing in partnership with European publications. The activities that are being criminalized, the activities for which he's being prosecuted, could be equally brought against any journalist in the, in, in the uh, European Union. This cannot be tolerated. Amnesty International has called this case a politically motivated case. They called the, the United Kingdom's uh, High Court decision, the latest High Court decision, a travesty of justice. The Australian Prime Minister, also in the past three weeks, has said enough is enough that he has made representations to the US government calling for Julian for this case to be brought to an end and for charges to be brought. You asked how Julian's doing. He's suffering profoundly. He has no reason to be in a prison cell where he has remained for almost four years without charge in the UK. And the charges that have been laid against him in the United States are charges for activities that we, as democracies, say are the highest importance of having an open and accountable society where government crimes and excess and corruption can be exposed without fear of reprisal and certainly without fear of imprisonment. Julian is uh, in a small prison cell for over 20 hours a day. Just imagine that for years. We have two children, they're three and five years old. They get to see their father about one hour a week. Our children need their father. And this incredible injustice has to end. has always been a extremely controversial prosecution even in the United States. The Obama administration announced that it was not going to prosecute Julian over the Chelsea Man leaks uh, because they said Julian's son is a publisher, he's not a hacker. And they also said that um, the only way to go after Julian Assange and WikiLeaks was to pro prosecute him as a publisher and to set a precedent for the rest of the press and that the Obama administration was not prepared to do that. So what changed? There was no change in any of the evidence or the information 
The only thing that changed was the administration, and the Trump administration came in. Julian was charged in 2018 because they were prepared to go after the press, because they wanted to set a president after, uh, to be able to go after the press under the 1917 Espionage Act, which is an extremely um, um, broad and outmoded and uh, dangerous piece of that legislation. It was, it was from the First World War. Um, so why is Biden pursuing what is Trump's most dangerous and lasting legacy? There is a, a, a lot of, uh, even in the Department of Justice, um, several prosecutors were taken off the case because they disagreed with the espionage charge, um, charges against Julian. This was reported in the Wall Street Journal in 2018, uh, 2019. This is a political case. It will be dropped if there is enough pressure for it to be dropped. And there is unanimity among the human rights organizations, um, all the major human rights organizations, all the press freedom organizations. In fact, the Committee to Protect uh, Journalists just um, a week ago, this was after the New York Times and the Mont and so on, um, the Committee to Protect Journalists, together with the Reporters Without Borders and other press freedom groups, major press freedom and human rights groups in the United States, called on the Attorney General to, to cancel these charges. The biggest, uh, the biggest uh, shift has been in the Australian government, which is now openly calling for uh, Julian's release. And this is what it will take. Uh, for, for Julian to be released. We're not there yet, but there has to be a growing and um, increasingly uh, insistent clamor for him to be released. How long should a journalist be in prison for publishing the truth? Tell me. for me because really Julian's life lies in the hands of decision makers and what the United States needs to hear is from its allies to say this is intolerable and not just because Julian's life is at stake but because this case is a threat to press freedom within the European Union consider that Julian, as I said, he's not a US citizen. He wasn't in the US jurisdiction. The US is applying its laws extraterritorially into the European space. So it is effectively limiting press freedom beyond its borders. And criminally uh, uh, sanctioning public publishing the truth. The the U.S. case is so outrageous that what they have said in the extradition hearing is that because Julian is not a U.S. citizen, he does not enjoy um, U.S. constitutional rights. He does not enjoy First Amendment rights. Think of the absurdity of this. First of all, it's a, it's a discrimination against him on the basis of his nationality. Secondly, if you're applying your Espionage Act laws beyond your borders, to pluck someone from a, a foreign jurisdiction, bring them to your courts, and then say, you're excluded from constitutional protections because you are not a US citizen. It is an outrage. I mean, I don't even have words for this. It's a, it is so absurd that when you explain it, um, people think it can't be true, but they've stated it in court. That's how outrageous uh, this case is. It is a, a, a construction to pursue a person. It is a, a political persecution. 
And if you don't understand, uh, I, I, I often get this case, where are we at in the legal process and so on. It is beyond, it is beside the point. This is not a legal process, it's a political process. And legally, it is beyond the pale. Um, Julian is going to fight this legally uh, as far as he can. He will try to bring it to the European Court of Human Rights. And that will create um, jurisprudence that affects European countries, affects EU countries, it will determine the scope of press freedom within the EU. And as I said, Julian was publishing in a partnership with Le Monde, Der Spiegel, and so on. And recently we have learned that during the Trump administration, they didn't just bring this outrageous case. There were plans and discussions in the White House. Plans asked uh, by, by CIA Director Mike Pompeo for how to kidnap, rendition, and even assassinate Julian when he was in the embassy. How is it possible that we're even contemplating that the UK is even contemplating the extradition of Julian to the country who has plotted his assassination. It just, um, there is no possible uh, justice uh, at the end of this. Julian cannot face a fair trial after all that has happened. His, his lawyers' meetings have been spied on by the CIA. There's a, U, uh, a case in, the, in Spain um, against the security company, which was working inside the embassy. Two whistleblowers came from, from that security company. They went to the Spanish police when Julian was arrested. And they gave evidence, hard evidence, hard drives, of how they had been instructed, not by Ecuador, but by their handlers in the United States, to spy on Julian, spy on his privileged legal meetings. They were instructed to retrieve the DNA of our six-month-old baby. Why did they want the DNA of our baby? And this was during the time that they were plotting to assassinate him. The investigation about the plots to assassinate him came out last year. It was an investigation out of DC. Three national security journalists who have no uh, particular sympathy for Julian or Wikileaks uh, they did a, a 7,000 word investigation with over 30, that's 30, 30 named and unnamed sources in the U.S. National Security uh, Council and the CIA that corroborated that there were plans to kidnap and assassinate Julian. Hi, Stella. Can you comment on the fact? You have to go as close to a micro, sorry. Otherwise, the interpreters cannot work. Can you introduce yourself? And introduce yourself. My name is, can you can hear you, me? Can you turn on the micro? My name is Mel Yasanini. Stella, can you comment on the fact that others have published unredacted versions of the same material that WikiLeaks has? Uh, a new gentleman has come forward from Krypton admitting to the fact that he also did the same. All of these people are walking free. Hi, this, this refers to a, a recent um, um, statement by Krypton, which is a publisher, a US publisher, um, who published the US State Department cables unredacted uh, over a day um, before and uh, before WikiLeaks, and, and he was the first one to, Krypton was the first one to publish, um, and there were tens, if not hundreds, of, of websites that had the unredacted cables. It's a very, uh, it highlights the um, selective prosecution in this case, and that, uh, um, that the U.S. is, the U.S. government is advancing a theory that it can, um, it can put publishers in prison for republication. So that means anyone. Um, 
there's, I think, also Daniel Ellsberg, the uh, Pentagon Papers whistleblower, has said that he received the um, Chelsea Manning leaks. Julian gave them to Daniel Ellsberg in case something happened to him. And Daniel Ellsberg has said that he should also be prosecuted because he is guilty of receiving and possessing um, the, um, the Chelsea Manning leaks, which is um, the bulk of the, of the charges against Julian. see any raised hand. Uh, I would like uh, Mrs. Autala to just uh, conclude this panel. 